thank you for joining me today. My name is Jen Butler. I'm a consultant for Rising Tide. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit today about uh, ticket review and closure processes. Um, you know, as working for an MSP for you know 11 years, we definitely ran into this quite a few times where on a ticket there would be open tasks or open appointments that hadn't actually been closed out by the technician. So you're sitting there wondering to yourself, you know, did this actually happen? Did this task get completed? Uh, did this person actually meet with so and so person on such and such date? Uh, you know, it takes time um, for your dispatcher, uh, for your billing uh, people who are going over the tickets at the end of the month to say, you know, we did all of the things that we said that we were going to do on a ticket. So there's some things that you can do in Halo PSA to kind of mitigate uh, the processes. Uh, you know, that you take uh, with your dispatch team and your technicians to close tickets uh, that will ensure that tasks get closed, appointments get closed, uh, and just everybody is hopefully doing exactly what they need to do. Uh, so we can go over to my screen now. And the basic layout um, of what we're discussing today kind of involves some customizations to Halo directly, uh, the built-in items, and also creating some custom items. So when you go into the configuration of Halo, <clears throat> you go to tickets, uh, you go to actions. Uh, one of the primary things you do is emailing a user, right? And they can technically change the status during that action. You could go in here and restrict them from changing it to something like closed or completed, right? So that's just one way that you could mitigate that. Because we're gonna we're gonna channel what a technician is able to complete within a ticket. So once you're done with that, you could go into the statuses themselves and say, I don't want you to show in the quick status change dropdown, for instance. So when you go into a ticket directly, it's not gonna be there on the side pane to be able to select um, closed or completed on that ticket. And then when you go into the workflows, you can edit a workflow so that they no longer have access to this resolve ticket action uh, or completing a ticket or anything like that without going through a custom action that we've created called resolve. So this resolve action that we've created, uh, the second page. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, is comprised of a couple custom fields, right? So we're asking the technician, uh, are you ready to resolve this ticket? Uh, and there's basically a yes, no drop down. So if they are ready to complete the ticket, let's go into the service ticket. Did I think it was this one? So you can see here. We went and we removed closed and completed from the quick status change drop down. So they can't complete it here, right? They can't resolve the ticket up here. In the email user field, they can't complete the ticket. So they're forced to go through our resolve. So is the ticket ready for resolution? Yes. No, it's not because you have to do's, you have appointments, you have tasks. Uh, the way that this is set up is it will hide um, any sort of resolution box, status change, uh, any any field that you really want to hide, uh, you can have it hide. Uh, anything that you want to check on the ticket, you know, technically I'm only checking to-dos, appointments, tasks here, but you could uh, expand that to say, uh, does the ticket have an asset tied to it that is also tied to the client on the ticket? You know, one thing that I notice a lot in MSP, uh, you know, ticket statistics is that you don't have a configuration or an asset tied to the ticket. You know, it's just the user. Um, it's important to know if there is an asset involved in a ticket. Maybe that computer needs to be replaced. You know, it's got a lot of tickets tied to it. Um, I know a lot of 
automatically generated tickets may not necessarily have that asset tied to it at the same time too. You know, your RMM is creating hundreds or thousands of tickets uh, over the course of a year, uh, possibly about the same device. You know, it, it would be great to track that information in a report. Um, and you can prevent somebody from closing the ticket unless it has an asset if you were to just query the database the same way that we're querying if there's appointments to do tasks. So to create that, essentially you have to create the action. So we were already in the action screen. Now we're gonna go to the lookups area and custom fields. And why is that taking so long to load? Let's try this one. There we go. All right, so custom fields. So we can sort by ID there. So we created three custom fields for this. The, is the ticket ready for resolution? The resolution notes, the resolution notes, um, HTML control box. So it's important to have both of these listed. This is just a single selection. It's got yes or no. Um, it's important that that's not a checkbox uh, because you can't do lookups with a checkbox. You can only do lookups with a single selection or some other field that has uh, a more definitive state to it other than just true or false, right? So then you have the resolution notes, which is just a rich text field. There's no default value. Then you have the HTML control box, which is the same. Rich text field, no default value. So in the lookups, and let's try refreshing this again. Thank you, Halo. We have a lookup to populate the resolution notes. So it's based on the trigger field. Is the ticket ready for resolution? So you make it required. Go in here and look at it. It's nothing special, just yes, it's re required for the lookup. Uh, it doesn't matter what value it has. Um, it's going to do the lookup. So in the SQL, what we're doing here is seeing if there's any to-dos, seeing if there's any appointments, and seeing if there's any tasks. So a to-do has its own dedicated table, uh, and we're just associating the ticket ID with that fault to-do fault ID. Uh, because in the Halo schema, most of the tables have some sort of um, abbreviation in the beginning that re you know relates to the table. So AP fault ID equals ticket ID, and an appointment has you know AP is a task or AP uh, you know false or true. So it, it's pretty simple. Is it a task or is it not a task? If it's not a task, it's an appointment. So based on these selections. Uh, if any of these come up as true, then we're going to style these. We're, we're just going to export text that is HTML, CSS styling. And we're going to take um, some canned text and we're going to insert that also. So based on the canned text, let's just go. You know, the resolution to do task appointment. Um, approve resolution, you know, you can insert these particular text and styling um, to preserve caps, because the SQL doesn't preserve caps very well. Uh, let's get back to lookups. So in the SQL, there's two. So we have the warning with all of that canned text, um, you know, is there a task open? Is there an appointment open? Is there a to-do open? And it's just going to list them like you saw before. In the second lookup, which I named hide save, uh, it's also taking that same logic. Is there an appointment? Is there a to-do? Is there a task? And it's basically just saying, if there is, we're not going to display the submit button. We're not going to display um, the ability for the person to add a note. We're not going to 
display this other field that we want to hide on this particular action. I mean, this this can be applied anywhere an action can be applied. It's not necessarily in the context of uh, just resolving a ticket. Uh, I mean, just doing this, you could do it on forms or dashboards um, to be able to hide fields that you don't want somebody to see based on different conditions. Um, there's other ways that you can format the HTML of things, um, you know, based on those values. So, you know, one, once you have that defined criteria that you want the technician to complete before you allow them to pr proceed on the ticket, right? Let's go back to our ticket here. It's the high priority one. So let's just, you know, show it again. It's got open to dos, it's got open ticket, open appointments, tasks to dos. Let's go ahead and close them. And then appointments. And then tasks. Complete them and we'll show the resolution. And Halo likes to cache things, so we're going to do a hard refresh here. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, there we go. So all pending items completed. So it's just a look up on the database. Um, again, any any field that you want, you could target. Uh, if it's a general user ticket and you don't want the general user filled out, you want the real user filled out uh, on a particular service ticket type. Um, anything, any combination that you could think of that you can do a true or false value with, um, is something that you'd be able to do with a lookup, populate a custom field to say whatever you want. Uh, you can populate links. Um, it's very, very customizable. Uh, that's one thing that I really like about Halo PSA is the customizability. You can do whatever you want. It's it's really the limitation is your imagination. So thank you very much for listening to me and uh, watching my video. And I hope to see you all soon. Take care.